Hi, Jitendra. Thank you so much for giving us your valuable time. So for the viewers, may we request you to please share your journey and your story in your own words. Sure. So uh, a brief background about me. I was born and raised in Mumbai. So I was a city boy all my life. I had not lived in any other home, even in the city, all my life. So I just left four months ago to come here, do my MBA. So uh, for my undergrad education, I went to the University of Mumbai. I went to Kodar College in Matunga. They become uh, for my undergrad and also parallelly was pursuing chartered accountancy and I finished that in 2015. Um, post that I started my career in audit with Deloitte and spent two years there auditing Tata Motors and then I left to go to Nomura where I spent about four years in financial and capital reporting supporting the European and American business. Um, that's what I did for work. I parallelly was also doing CFA and then just while I, while I was at Nomura, I was really attracted to financial services and I wanted to go into a more high impact role. So that's when I decided that I have to leave now, go to business school and, you know, do the whole thing. So started looking at business schools, took the GMAT exam, applied to a few business schools, got into Stern and uh, came here four months ago. That's about it. <laughs> Okay, wow, that's amazing. So in your opinion, what are a few factors or actions you took that made all the difference? I think the MBA particularly, I felt like I was, uh, in a way, what I did right was in hindsight, not that I did this consciously. Uh, in hindsight, I feel like I developed a more holistic um, personality through the years in the sense that I was always involved in extracurricular activities at school, at uh, college um, so that sort of you know made a difference because I was always not that um, not that kind of class I was a nerd but I was not that kind of a nerd who was just in class and attending re lectures regularly and stopping exams that was not me but I was somewhere in the top five percentile probably but I was also very involved in extracurriculars that sort of made a difference um, in general I felt like um, my career choices were driven by what I wanted to do Mm -hmm. more than you know what I should have been doing so money never dictated anything so I felt like that is probably what made somewhat of a difference in hindsight I mean I'm just looking back at it right now not that I have given this a very serious thought mm -hmm. but that's actually amazing I mean mm -hmm. the kind of motivation that you have towards uh, what you're passionate about I think that's something to really learn from you yeah. what do you think were a few mistakes you committed in the process I think what I didn't realize was that there was, um, you know, there were some doors that only business schools opened. I actually used to look down on an MBA when I was, when I graduated in 2015 from my chartered accountancy course, I used to feel like I have a CA, why do I need to go and do an MBA? And uh, I also felt at that time that, uh, you know, I read this report that said uh, one in every four uh, Indian graduates will have an MBA by 2025 and I was like okay everybody's doing an MBA so I don't need to do it um, so I didn't do it and also I think so I think that is what I felt was a mistake in the sense that I believed I did not do I did not need to do an MBA uh, for the longest time it was not that I still believe that it's a necessary uh, thing to have but like I think there are some doors that MBAs can open that others cannot so for me I just give this advice to everyone that MBA if you're coming to an MBA school whether it's in US or in India to study mm -hmm. to get some new knowledge then your idea of business school is wrong like you're not going there to study nobody goes to business school to study it's basically you're paying up for getting a network, you're paying up to open uh, open a few doors that would probably shut to you. That's why people do an MBA and that's why I did an MBA. So I think the mistake I made was early on, I believe that MBAs is, an MBA is unnecessary. It, it is wrong for sure. Um, then overall through the process in general, I feel like uh, this is something a lot of my friends have also uh, talked to me about once we got to Stern is um, we tend to focus a lot on meritocracy because that's what we've been raised to believe in in India. Like if you don't get the score, you're not going to get the admission, right? So we believe a lot in like like hardcore achievements, um, you know, even in our applications, what we try to highlight is our scores, our achievements at work, our achievements at uh, school and all of that awards and whatever whatnot um, all of that but I feel like what we miss in that journey is to showcase our personality to the schools which I believe is a huge mistake that Indians do because once I got here just for fun like 
we were just sharing our MBA applications with one another as friends because we were like, okay, let's look at how embarrassing it is and what kind of lies everyone told uh, in their application. And when I, when I went through it, the one big thing I realized was that one thing differentiating Indians from everyone else was that there was absolutely no or very little showcase of personality in terms of our interests, in terms of what we like to do outside of work, what we do to relax, all of that. So I think those were two mistakes I believe I made too with everyone else that you shouldn't. Oh, all right. Okay. So going back to your GMAT preparation mm-hmm. phase, what mm-hmm. were the main resources that you used and what mm-hmm. advice will you give to the future aspirants? Okay, sure. So I think for GMAT, what I did was initially I was... Um, focusing on the original guides. So I that's the only predominant uh, material I used. The original guides are the best and the Holy Grail, the Holy Bible, whatever you want to call them. It's You don't need anything else besides the original guides. So I did my concepts and a few practice questions through that. And then when the time came to practice mocks, I had experts global mocks and I had uh, a few of the old, original mocks as well and I think that was enough for me because I think at some point I realized that the exam is not about concept the exam is about timing and so practice is key so I did like the 15 mocks that experts global had given me I did six mocks through the original guide and I think that was more than sufficient to get me a good score so I practiced very very heavily and the materials I used were OG predominantly because that's what is the closest to what your actual exam is going to be like there's no point in being over or under prepared I know there are some service providers that give you very tough exams and some people believe and in chartered accountancy also we used to believe that a tough paper uh, means that in the actual exam it'll be easier so you'll have an easier time but that's not necessarily true for GMAT. It's a standardized test. So, you know, you want to be as close as possible to the actual exam and the way it's conducted rather than, you know, over-preparing. So I feel like over-preparation is also not necessary. Mm -hmm. Just doing the right thing is important. So just do the original guide and I think you should be good. Okay, okay. So according to you, what is the frequency of mocks that a student must take? So I think right in the beginning, I had taken one mock as a diagnostic to see where I stand without any preparation. And then I used to take a mock every weekend. So either Saturday or Sunday, whenever I found the time, I used to take one mock exam, um, which was just to see whether my score is improving, not improving, what I'm doing right, wrong, all that, where I stand. And then I think a week before the exam, I used to take a mock every single morning from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, a.m. because that was my actual exam timing as well my exam was from 8 a.m to 11 a.m so i used to do it from 7 to 11 and uh, you know i used to just uh, do it at the same time so that i could simulate the actual environment i used to take eight minute breaks sharp like even when i was at home i used to not uh, get up in the middle of the exam because even though i had the functionality to just so that i could simulate what i'm going to face in the actual exam how stressful is it going to be to just come back after eight minutes and i used to do it in the same order that i wanted to do the actual exam so i used to take uh, quant first then verbal then the two writing sections so i think uh, a week before i used to do it every single day and just to see how it's going whether my score is improving not improving what kind of challenges am i facing so yeah that's the frequency of marks i have yeah so that's quite an interesting way to go about the practice tests i think like doing it at the yeah. same time and also like yeah. doing it in the same order you are actually preparing doing your gmat exam so that's that's pretty interesting. i think it's important yeah. i think it's important to do it in that order and at that time because you want to see so the thing is what happened was that um you i realized a few friends also told me that you know they were practicing during the day but like they got an exam slot from 11 to 2 but like you have to train your brain to be its most active self and be its best performer at the time of the exam right so if you've been practicing from 3 p.m to 6 p.m and then your exam is at 8 a.m in the morning naturally your brain is not going to function so for me it was important that i woke up every morning at 6 got ready you know at 7 and like started the exam at 7 so that i could see exactly at that time how my brain functions if it's not the best i have to train it to be the best at that time so that i could get the highest score so that's why it's important to simulate it exactly at that time Mm -hmm. and in that same order because that's what you'll face in the actual exam as well absolutely yeah that is so true so what would you like to say about your experiences and learnings from managing your application timelines oh i don't know how i did that because i was a little late 
in my GMAT because um, I didn't get the right score the first time around. So I had to reappear once. So I had like a 690 and then a 750. So uh, I got a little late in terms of managing my timeline with GMAT, which is sort of why I had a ripple effect on my applications. But the thing is, I had already started working on them parallelly. I had not taken it very seriously because I was like, if I don't get a score, I will never submit this application. So there's no point in spending too much effort. But I had started doing rough outlines of essays and like, looking at the applications, downloading them, just seeing what it is all about. Um, and then after my GMAT was over, I started like, like lightning speed working towards my applications and submitting them on time. So I actually missed round one deadline because of my poor GMAT score. Uh, then I had to apply in round two, which was a January round. And I, for Stern particularly, I, it was round three because Stern also has round two in November. So once my exam was done, I immediately started writing all the essays, all the documents, getting everything ready so, I, so that I could submit on time. And uh, I think I had about a month wherein I finished all the applications. So I worked on uh, another school's application first, which was rolling uh reviews so i did that first and then everything else i finished by the deadline i don't know i don't exactly remember what the timeline was but like i remember that i had just one month between the day i got my gmat score to the day when it was to the day when applications were due okay i mean that's a pretty short period of time but it's amazing how you managed to still pull it off and finish it all before the deadline so i only applied to four schools so it's not a big feat <laughs> also i think that's also one of the things do not apply to just four schools was probably five to seven is a good number for my year risky bed so <laughs> okay so uh could yeah. you please describe your interview experience with the v schools yeah sure so i interviewed for a couple of schools um so there were two distinct kinds of interviews i saw one was like the blind interviews where the interview has nothing but your resume uh, and then you are supposed to try the discussion and like tell them everything you want to tell them and then there was non-blind interviews, which is something Stern does, and I think HPS also does, wherein the interviewers are from the admissions team, they've gone through your entire application and they can ask you questions from anywhere. So both of them have their pros and cons, uh, and I think I witnessed that when I was interviewing. So with the non-blind interviews where your resume is with uh, Mm -hmm. just your resume is with the interviewer that then it becomes your responsibility to sort of drive the discussion and tell them each and every key point of your application as to why you are a deserving MBA candidate because they've not read your essay they've not read your other documents so they don't know exactly what your credentials are besides your resume so it's it comes down to us in to in, uh, to you know drive the discussion in such a way that you cover all your cell points and give them everything through the interview experience while on the other hand with the non-blind interviews which is what i experienced at stern it's very very important to know every single thing that you've written in your application because the questions could come from anywhere and it also has to make sense it has to be a watertight story so in case like a lot of us do lie on applications. I didn't, but like a lot of people do lie on their applications. And in case we've lied, then that makes then you have to make sure that you cover it up so well in the interview that it doesn't leak out because there will be there will be a lot of questioning. Uh, and if the story doesn't hold in those questionings, then you're probably you know giving the signal that your application was something else and you are something else and that's a bad look always so then it becomes very very important to make sure that your story is concise and it's making sense from all sides i think that is what is an important thing to note because i remember one of the questions i was asked at stern was i just mentioned somewhere that i love watching movies and i was asked about what what is my favorite movie character so even that could be us so it's not so nothing you mention in the application is you know not going to be questioned anything and everything you mentioned can be asked about so yeah all right okay so can you tell us more about your mba experience it has been fantastic like i wanted to be in new york which is why i chose stern over another school which was not in new york um so i wanted to be in new york uh, I wanted to be close to Broadway. Just I like I mentioned, I love movies and theater, so I wanted to be close to Broadway. So that's why I'm here. Um, the past four months have been fantastic. We luckily we got to do this in person. We at one point I thought that it's definitely not going to happen because, um, like this is all about, like this is not going to happen at all because of the second wave that we experienced in India. But luckily we got to do this in person, so I'm very happy about that. I met 
the most amazing people. The class that Stern has is about 360 students. I've not met all of them, but I've met a significant proportion of them and they're all outstanding people. They're all, you know, rooting for you while at the same time competing with you. So it's never cutthroat. That's never something I felt, which is actually quite an anti-New York thing to have because I'd heard all, all kinds of things about New York, about how it's cutthroat, people will walk all over you. But like at Stern, that's not the case at all. So it's been an amazing, amazing experience. Um, we got to do this in person. I'm enjoying living in New York City right now as I look out of my window. It's snowing. I'm not seeing a lot in India. So yeah, <laughs> it's been it's been a fantastic experience. Okay, wow, that that's really nice. So, uh, what would you like to say about your job search experience during the MBA, mm-hmm. and what tips will you give to the future candidates? Absolutely. So I would say that I think the biggest thing uh, I would say is that pick the pick the school based on how they perform in your desired career post MBA. So like, for example, Stern does very, very well when it comes to investment banking. Stern is also doing very well in consulting. Stern is also doing very, very well in tech. So if you are interested in these, you can consider Stern. If you're interested in something where, you know, other schools perform better, then go for that. Like, I just don't know how, what, what careers they are, but like in general, I would say that look at the career outcomes of every single school, you know, look at the location where you want to work post MBA, because you don't want to be like, okay, I'm going to this school in this city, but like for my job, I'm going to move to another city. If that's the case, if that if that's something you're interested in, go ahead. But otherwise, in general, the way I looked at it was I selected Stern based on what I wanted to do. Okay. Post MBA, the location where I wanted to be in New York. So that is how I decided what school I should be at. And that's what has helped me in job search as well. Okay. With regards to the job search, particularly mm-hmm. every single top school that there is in the US gets the same companies and gives you the same opportunities to network to talk to people and make your way through so it's not going to be um you know restricted in any way so if you want to do investment banking jb morgan goldman Sachs, morgan stanley every single company comes to campus as much as they go to every other campus so has a very strong alumni presence in every sector so that's not a problem at all when it comes to tech you'll have all the fine companies coming to campus so it's not it's not uh, in any way there is no door that is closed when you go to any top MBA program so in that sense it's not going to be a problem what it comes down to is how you network how you pitch yourself what your intentions are what your plans are how you perform in interviews how you perform in the coffee chats that happen before the interviews that's what will decide your fate so I think uh, what I would say is any top MBA will not uh, you know stop you from going anywhere mm-hmm. you know as long as you're so determined and so clear and you go and get it all right okay uh, but it's definitely not a cakewalk because then uh, you like kind of have to make the best out of the resources absolutely. that you have right okay. absolutely yeah every single school will give you all the resources and then it comes down to what you do with them yeah right absolutely okay so according to you what are a few common mistakes that all the aspirants must avoid i think definitely one is focusing too much on your achievements it's great you ha- everybody has achievements i think resume is the right place for that do not give it too much real estate to it on your um, essays for stern do not give it too much weightage on your pick six you can definitely do it like i had i also had one picture which is about me holding a giant trophy you can definitely do that like your achievements are very important but like i would also say showcase your personality a little bit especially indians i feel we focus so much on everything else that we forget to showcase our personality and that's why you'd see some people with extremely high scores you know not making it to these schools why is probably because uh, you know yeah. You didn't show them your interests. You didn't tell them what you are outside of work. You didn't tell them what you are as a personality. So, and I think we all think that we can show that in our interviews, but like, what if you don't even get an interview? Okay. So right. I think uh, one thing you should definitely focus on is like showcasing your whole self rather than just your right. achiever self. Definitely showcase what you're interested in, what you like doing outside of work. So if it's painting, if it's um, you know, movies, if it's sports, anything, just show that in the application as well. And yeah, definitely cast a wide net. Like four schools is too little. Right. It's it's a risky bet. You may not make it. So okay. definitely consider applying to a couple of more schools, not too many. Don't go, don't go to any schools, but like four to seven, five to seven, six to seven, something of that sort should do the trick for you. All right. Okay. So what would be your final message to all the future aspirants watching this video? Good luck. Study well. GMAT is very, very important, especially as Indians. I probably didn't say this before, but like 
the average GMAT scores are not something you should aim for. Definitely go for above average. Um, showcase your personality in your applications. Be an interesting person on paper before you make it to the interviews. And then in interviews, just try to prove that what you wrote on paper is actually true. Um, so I think that's something you should do. Uh, pick, a, pick a wide net of schools. Don't necessarily be hell-bent on one or the other school because I can tell you for sure when I go to my, uh, when I go to these interviews, I see, so when I'm sitting in an interview room at a company's office, let's say if it's a consulting firm or an investment bank or a tech company, you'll have people from every single school. Mm -hmm. So you'll have people from your, from the school that you perceive were above your school in rankings and, you know, people who were below, everybody will be there as long as you're talented, you'll be there. So if you come to a top business school, the difference really is very, very minimal. I, in fact, I don't think there's any difference at all. Every single school offers you a distinct and unique experience and advantage. Stern's advantage is New York City. New York City's opportunities are unparalleled and like unmatched. So all of that comes in. So I'm just saying like, do not be hell-bent on one school. Be flexible. Look at, look at a few schools, you know, see wherever you can best fit in and let's see whatever is acceptable to you because if you are really talented if you are really determined if you are really willing to work hard no matter what school you're at in the top 20 or whatever the number of schools is um you'll you will find success so don't be like super hell-bent that oh, okay i'll only go to business school if i get into one school or i won't do it at all mm -hmm. okay okay yeah. that's great uh and I would really like to congratulate you for completing your journey to success. I think it's just a new beginning, I would say, but uh, it's quite yeah. inspiring and interesting how far you have come. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your experience and learnings yeah. with us. So thank you so much for giving us thank your you time. So much. It was great talking to you too. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> yes. Thank you.